Now that we've powered back, welcome back to some more Stormworks Build and Rescue. I'm Stormrunner Gaming, and today we are here with the 1.0 release of Stormworks. I'm pretty excited for the full release of the game here, and hopefully you guys are out there as well. I do apologize, I'm a little bit late with this, but like I did say in my previous modular engine video, I was going to be covering the major features, as well as a few things that people did miss with the major update here. So without further ado, let's jump into the game. And there is a brand new screen here, and this is because there's new customization menus within the game, which the best feature that I think for at least creating servers and creating games, especially for the creative mode, you don't have to restart a server or restart a game if you want to change one of the modes within Stormworks which was definitely not exactly a problem, but it took more time away from actually playing the game in the previous versions of Stormworks. But of course, we're going to jump right into custom mode, or I guess you'd call it creative mode, so that we can go around and look at a couple different features. I have heard from a few friends in the Stormworks community that the career mode actually do have a couple of bugs due to the 1.0 update. So if you are planning to play the career mode, just keep that in mind. Hopefully the developers will get on that. They've actually been very fast with fixing some other problems that happened with 1.0. So I'm pretty sure they should get to it pretty soon. But here we are at the creative island. And right off the bat, we've got some heavy rain here that we can go in and, you know, just toggle off by overriding the weather. Let's turn all that down and we can see firsthand this brand new interactive menu within the game. So all of these settings you used to have to set before creating a game or a server, you can now change within the game. And as well, you get the admin control of locking or unlocking all of these buttons here. So we can clean up the vehicles just in case it's too laggy, reveal the map, unlock all islands. Of course, if you guys have played Stormworks before, all of these buttons will most of these buttons. I don't know if auto refill infinite money was there. Maybe if you toggled some like draggable like this type of thing in the menu you could create auto refill or infinite money but I don't know if I remember seeing all of these buttons like allowing photo mode, allow vehicle spawning. The map has gotten a very big overhaul as well. The map right here, not only does it have its pretty regular control here, like we saw in that previous menu, if we drop back into it, we can reveal the map in creative mode, so you don't have to take out a quick plane or vehicle or anything to explore to another location. So that also means we can fast travel just about any island we want to. You know, if we really wanted to go up to the Arctic, we can go there in a quick click of a button. And now revealing the map is a cool feature and all, but the coolest feature I think that I saw in the 1.0 update that I absolutely love is these four different weather buttons right here that show us the wind, fog, rain, and temperature changes within a region. Of course, if we check out temperature first, as we go further north, it is colder. And as we head further south, it's going to be a lot hotter. I haven't actually tested out what the really hot zones and the really cold zones are going to do for vehicles and everything. But I assume it's not really going to change much of anything. Other than your vehicle needs to be equipped with a heater to go into the Arctic region up here. It is quite interesting to see the splattering of islands in Stormworks as well when you completely reveal the map. If I'm totally honest with you guys, I've never actually covered up or excuse me, uncovered an entire map in Stormworks to see all of the islands like splashed around here like little raindrops. They're in just two circles almost. Well, the northern region is a lot more pronounced circle. The southern region is definitely a little bit more sparse around the edges with some weird splatterings here and there. And of course the mega island and the large island situated pretty close to each other due to their connections with that railroad track there. Those three other buttons we have rain, which I'm not too sure about this. I've just messed around with it for a minute or two and I can set override time to off that our time moves. Maybe if I speed it up as fast as humanly possible here, 
Apparently we can have a day-night cycle of a minute now. That's gonna be insanely quick. I thought the previous version was 10 minutes. It doesn't even look like the sun's moving. Maybe I didn't actually set it here. No, I did set it. It's odd. Oh, override tying on. There it goes. Now it's racing along the sky like a chariot in the wind. That is very quick. Alright, as that keeps going in the background, let's look at our other features. But what I was talking about on the map, if I go to my correct menu, I would have assumed that the rain and storms would move across the land. But they seem to have their own hot zones, which when reading the patch notes actually, I figured out that it's just more densely packed areas that have heavier types of weather at that spot. So if you go out to this random spot in the ocean, you're going to have some pretty heavy rain out there. And of course around the mainland as well. It seems to have a lot of rain to its name, especially when it rains at 100%. And these zones... Hold on, are you guys seeing what I'm seeing? Now that the game's moving fast enough, if we zoom in, look at this X right here. It's clearly moving now. So my assumption was correct. I didn't see this earlier. I turned it up to 10 minutes thinking that was the, the lowest time, the quickest time per day. And I didn't really see it moving, zoomed out. But now that we have it at one minute, these slowly move. That is awesome. I'm assuming for the, not the temperature, but the fog and wind do the same exact thing around us. The fog is a little bit interesting. It doesn't seem like there's very hot zones or dense zones for fogs on the map, but it gives you a little understanding. Maybe there is some dense zones, there's just, they're not around the islands right now. And of course, the final being the waves. And something I'm really interested in for the next video I'm going to be doing, or maybe a future one, maybe not my most immediate video, I want to see how large the waves are, because another note they put with the red zones in here, the weather is a lot harsher or a lot stronger. So that means in turn the waves are a lot bigger and stronger. Meaning that we can probably find some stupidly large waves with a boat and see how well we do out there on the ocean. I'm interested to try that out. Next up we have the mission editor. Not only has the mission editor been updated a bit, the update to it is pretty cool. They added this new Lua button where we can basically program our own missions here. So not only do we have a few triggers between different things, you can code just about everything you want in here. And they added a lot of different commands in their Lua library with that update page that you can use to create your own custom missions. As well as we get out of that, they did change a couple of things in career and missions as well as tutorial and logistics. And I'm still a little bit shaky on all of what they changed, but Hopefully in the future I'll figure out all of the cool new and different things they changed within that. The next big feature that they added in 1.0 was the first person. You can actually see your body all looking down and it's got that pretty good wiggle and movement to it. As well as interactable tools and things here. And I've actually laid out just about everything you can get here. And I've used a lot of these different tools for different things already. The defibrillator, you can basically revive any person that has been downed for any reason. You're actually going to need cable, rope, or hoses to now connect up anything between vehicles or between a hose and, you say, a gas canister or something. Not a gas canister, I'm thinking, excuse me, car. Usually there's a gas tank. Oh, there's the gas tank, the diesel. See, it already comes pre-equipped with a hose, and you have to attach it to there, and then we could attach it to the car over there. We're going to just put that back there. And there's a couple tools here that I haven't really played around with. Some of them are self-explanatory, like the first aid kit can revive you, flare guns can send out a signal that you're in distress, binoculars and compass, you know, they help you around with different things. A radio, you can talk to people around the ocean. Oxygen mask, flashlight, mother oxygen mask. 
Now, the strobe light and the transponder, I'm not entirely sure on the transponder. Me and Fallon were actually testing on that, and if you use a radio signal locator, it can actually help you find somebody using a transponder as far as I could figure out. But I'll have to do more testing on that in the future. Strobe lights, I think they just blink on and off. Maybe it helps find somebody in the dead of night, or maybe a sinking ship. I'm not entirely sure on that. And then the remote control unit is something I'm very interested in figuring out how it works. And I haven't done any testing, but tell me, have you guys created anything pretty cool with the remote control unit yet? Put a comment down below. And then we have our main hand tools where we can only hold one of these things. I talked about the hoses already, the radio locator signal for anybody that's in distress, the rope cables, defibrillator, of course, we have a fire extinguisher just in case the vehicle is on fire. And then we have some repair tools, a welding torch and an underwater welding torch. And we have this just because I've got some uh, pretty good vehicle damage on here. So we can get in the car, turn it on real quick, just throw it in economy. We don't need sport or sport plus. Like I was talking about the other day, it would now you can't hear anything from this engine really. I know my voice is a little bit louder than the game, but still, you can't hear almost anything from it. It's insane. But we are going to uh, sadly send it into a wall and set it on fire. I think I've broken just about everything. Engine's not coming back on. Oh no. The insurance company is not going to be happy with me. That's like seven boats and a car this month. Alright, so first things first, we can pick up our fire extinguisher and put out the fire. But if we actually want to, the game also added in the spreadable fire update as well with the 1.0. So a vehicle on fire, just like my car here, should keep burning until the entire thing is on fire. So let's give us a little time lapse and see just about how long it takes for this thing to catch fire here. And trust me, it shouldn't be that long as far as I've figured out. And as we can see, the vehicle is just about completely engulfed in flames now. Maybe we're missing a little quarter panel here on the back end. Well, the trunk might actually still... Oh, I forgot I had player damage on. So we probably want to stay at a safe distance and just extinguish that fire real quick. Come on. Oh, we probably shouldn't uh, break any bones shutting out the fire. Come on. We can do it. It's not too bad. You guys think this will, this will buff out pretty quickly? I really hope it does. Or else I'm in a lot of trouble. Uh, I've had too many vehicles die on me recently. Come on. Get me up and in here. Come on, I'm putting so much... I think I've covered myself more with the extinguisher than the car. Do I need to open the hood or something to get the last part? Oh, the hood is broken. Okay, quickly let's drop that with backspace and we can go grab a, a welding torch. I was going to call it a repairing torch, but it is still on fire. Oh, hood doesn't work. Our battery might be broken on the back end. I don't know if we can actually get to that if we can't repair enough here. Well, it is moving through this. Look at it repairing everything. That's crazy fast. Alright, let's drop that. And pick that back up. I really think it's the engine that's still on fire. I'm trying to get in here and repair it, but my crackling bones won't help me out here at all. You can even see the fire from in here. Oh, did I get it? I think I got it. Perfect. Alright, so let's drop that yet again and go back with the welding torch. You know, get all the cosmetic damage. Nobody knows anything ever happened to it. Perfect. Oh, there's a, there's a couple stripes here and there. Wow, that's just insanely quick, though. This is giving me a couple ideas for multiplayer videos. <laughs> How fast is this actually? I've never really welded anything. Well, an entire car like this. I tried it out a little bit earlier with some smaller pieces of a car. Just hitting a wall with it. Now, the main question is, can I repair it enough to get it started again? 
Because it looks like there's a ton of damage. And I don't know if I can get to every single piece of the car. So that's a big if I can do that. Then I might be able to get it started again. Well, it looks like just about everything I see is here and repaired. But I can't use any of the buttons. Hold on, let me not exactly cheat, but go to general and put my tooltips up. Let's see why it's not... Oh, I've killed the battery. Well, that's a problem. So the battery, you guys see the battery's at 0 0.002. So if the engine wouldn't have been on and stayed on while I crashed it, it would have been perfectly fine once I repaired it. But I can't do anything, and the battery is still draining. That's surprising. A good thing I kept a first aid kit out here with me, or else I wouldn't have been able to heal. So let's go on to a couple of features that people kind of skipped over from this 1.0 update. If we actually look at our custom menu here, there is an option for allow no clip. And if you guys don't know what that means, that basically means we can teleport our character anywhere by pressing your home button on the keyboard and now using your WASD. And say we want to move, let's go over to these mountains here and put our character on the top. We press home again to get out of it. And as you can see in third person, we're now over on this mountain. We can do the same exact thing, clicking home yet again, and we can move over there. And if you don't want to use no clip, you can also click on your map, click a location, and click teleport here in creative, or at least custom mode. I'm assuming it's just whenever you're not in career mode that you can teleport around. So... It does take a second or two longer than Noclip, but you know, it serves the same purpose there. So it definitely makes moving your character to a new location pretty cool. But the sad thing about this, although your character is able to Noclip, I figured out that your vehicle cannot do that. So if you sit in a vehicle and click the home button and move to another location, it kind of glitches there for a split second, but it doesn't take it with it. And I don't think there really is a way to fast travel with your vehicle. If you guys do know one, help me out as well as a lot of other Stormworks players and drop a comment down below. Because I've always been looking for a way to quickly move a vehicle around to a new location instead of having to spawn it at a place and moving it to another spot. So as you can see, Teleport here does the same exact thing, where it just takes your character model and not the vehicle you are in. Of course, maybe my car has some problem why it can't be teleported, but I'm assuming it's just not possible with either of those commands there. The next part of the update I want to talk about is the modular engines. And I'm surprised that some people kind of overlooked this part because it is a pretty big change to the game, allowing you to design your own engine. I will give people the benefit of the doubt because it is an experimental version. It is, you know, pretty buggy. The engines seem to make very low power, even if you set up a V8 kind of like this, or what the creator of this engine calls the flat 8. But still, that is something you can look towards. And if you guys have never built your own engine, you can check out my modular engine tutorial. It's the video right before this one, actually. Another big change to the game that I was quite surprised the developers did was they seem to have taken out the basic mode to the game, which I'm not exactly sure why they did. Maybe not very many people were using it or something, but I'm, I don't exactly, let's just say I don't agree with them doing that. It seemed like I knew a few people that enjoyed just messing around building stuff in basic mode. It was a lot simpler for getting a vehicle going and just to kind of design it without having to spend so much time on the systems and everything with advanced engines and stuff. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. If you guys do actually know how to get back to basic mode, if it actually exists, yeah, leave a comment because somebody was trying to argue with me the other day that it still exists, but... I can find no trace, and I've actually read through the patch notes twice now, well a lot more than twice, but twice before doing this video, 
to make sure that I read correctly, it said removed basic mode. So it seems like it is now just dust in the wind. And one of the cool things, not only when somebody goes down, uh, they're deceased, you're able to revive them, but you're also able to pick up their body. And if you don't have that defibrillator with you, you can actually go and get one while carrying their deceased body with you. So, I don't know, that's just another weird thing that some people missed out on. So that has been my little overview of the 1.0 update there. What did you guys like, dislike about the 1.0 update to Stormworks? I definitely do know a few things are still broken within the game, but like I said earlier, the developers should be getting to them as soon as humanly possible. But yeah, I'd like to hear what you guys think in those comments down below. But of course, if you guys did like this, please leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel to stay up with Stormworks and more of my content. But I've never been great. Goodbye, so people need me and I need to go.